Hi, I'm Tom Cherry Holmes, and I'm just a hacker having some fun. I found myself in between fun projects wanting to do something very different. Well, I decided to fire up my Atari 800 emulator, and I wanted to start work on a little graphic demo. But I wanted to do it differently. Instead of writing in an assembler, I chose to learn a new language, or a language that was new to me, rather. And in the process, I discovered a language that is very unique and very different and well suited for the Atari 8 bits. This language is called Forth. And over the next set of videos, I'm actually going to be showing you guys what I'm doing with it to accomplish the graphic demo that I want to make. And keep in mind here, this is me learning at the same time I'm making these screencasts and demos. So it's a learning experience for me as much as it is probably for you too. Throughout the course of this, I will be bouncing back and forth between the emulator and some web browsers that I have open here containing various bits of reference material here so I can demonstrate some things to you. And to start out, we'll actually take and launch the Atari 800 emulator that I'm using here called Altera, which is a very good emulator for our purposes here. I currently have it set up to be an Atari 800 machine, emulating an Atari 800 with 48K of memory running on NTSC television. Pretty standard, I think. Now, for the purposes of this, I will be using a standard FigForth that I've modified ever so slightly for our purposes here. Now, it's important to note that FigForth is entirely not just a language, but an operating environment unto itself. You do everything inside of it. So what can you do inside of it? Well, a lot of things. First of all, it's an interpreter. So everything that you do is instantly interpreted and done right there at the console. But if you don't know what to type, it won't be very helpful. So I'm actually going to show you a little bit here of how to walk around forth and do what you need to do in order to get familiar with the environment. To start off, I'm going to take and show some basic uh, forthisms to basically hammer through various bits and pieces so you can see kind of how it works. Forth works on the concept that the stack that's inside the computer is visible to you and you can directly manipulate the elements on the stack. Well, what does this mean? Well, whereas in other languages you would do something like that to get the answer 4 plus 4, in fourth you would put the two 4's on the stack and use the plus word to add them together and use a dot to display it. to achieve the same thing. Now it's worth noting here that this is in essence what the syntax of fourth is. Syntax in fourth is literally just a stream of words separated by space and terminated by enter. That's it. But in order for you to use those words, you have to know which words to use. Well, the quickest way to get a list of words in FigForth is to use VList, V for vocabulary. If you hit an enter, you get to see all the different words that you have defined inside the system itself. And as you can see here, that is a lot of, there are a lot of words you won't be able to use, like most languages, you'll only use maybe 10% of them. But the words that are here are both low level and they're very useful for a wide variety of programming tasks. As we can see here, you see various bits and pieces like uh, the plus, the minus, etc. The things that we used here just a moment ago to add those two numbers together. And the only thing that you don't see here are the fact are numbers. 
Numbers have special significance in that numbers literally get parsed and placed on the stack as is. So if I wanted to put the number 123 on the stack, I would simply type 123. And it will put it on the stack for me. I can display that number, take it off the stack, and display it using the, using the dot. If there are no more numbers on the stack, and you hit the dot again, you'll get a zero along with stack empty. And the system will let you know that there is nothing left on the stack for you to manipulate. Now, the thing about fourth, too, one of the, key, uh, one of the central concepts in fourth is that not only is everything interpreted, but you have intimate access to the machine below as well. So with that, I'll take and show you a simple demonstration on how to set the background color to a different color here by literally setting a value inside the color registers inside the machine. For that, we'll go over to our web browser here, and we will go to uh, our tab for mapping the Atari. And we actually see here Appendix 5 color and we see a description of the different play field registers here, what locations they are in memory, and some example colors and values. But we'll actually go down here to the bottom here. And those of us who know, who've used Atari machines before know that we start off in what we call graphic zero, or in other words, antic mode two. We have three separate color registers that we can deal with to set different parts of the screen. The character luminance, that is, the brightness of the characters, the background color used, and the color of the border. We're going to, we're going to go ahead and use the background register here. And that's register number 710. And we're going to set a value into that register to change the color. To do that, we use a special word in fourth called C at. C stands for character, which in our case is an 8 byte number. Oh, sorry, C, -A, C exclamation point. Now, you can't just use C at by itself. It says stack empty here. C at requires two values to put on the stack. The first value is the uh, is the byte that you're going to put into the color register. The second byte is the memory location to change, which is our color register. Now I'm going to go ahead and use a color 67, which gives us kind of a bright red light color. And I'm going to put that into location 710. As you can see, we have basically uh, set the color register here, and that's all well and good. We can set it back to the original color, like that. That's not very that's not very uh, intuitive, though. It's low level, and it, and at many times when you're first building your tools, you will work in low level words. But the goal and forth is to take and make those low-level words and abstract them into useful words that might be useful for you. The nice thing about fourth is that you can create your own words and in fact that is exactly what you do when you make fourth programs. To do that we use a special word in fourth called the colon. The colon is followed by the name of the word that we want to define. In this case I'll make one called red background. And after that, it's simply just a list of words that we want to do. In the same way that we tested out our word, 67710C uh, C exclamation point, we put it in. And to let it know that we're through defining the word, we use the semicolon. Now, it's very important. These are not language structures like you would see in other languages. The colon, the red background, the 67, 710, and the C at, and the semicolon are each individual words and thus must be separated by spaces. 
The system says OK to let us know that we've created the word. And from now on, we can use it. Neat, huh? So that's essentially what we use to take and do what we need to do. And I'll leave you here with one other small example here. I'm going to go ahead and make a quick word since we don't have it to clear the screen. Now for that, for those of you who know the Atari system and the, and the uh, character set that we use, there is a special character specifically to clear the screen. Under here, under control characters, we see a character called 125 decimal clear screen. And when you use it, it literally takes and just clears the screen. In fourth, there is a built-in word called emit, which emits a single character to the screen. In some cases, for example, let's say we want to make one to output the letter A. We find our letter A here. That is the character 65. and create the word. Now it's of note here especially when creating the word here you notice that I'm putting the parameters before the word that I'm going to act on. That's because we're putting the number on the stack and emit is taking it off the stack and doing something with it. This is a pattern that is repeated all throughout forth. So now when I type A it emits the, it emits the character A and goes on. Well, let's say I don't need that word anymore. I can type forget, and the word is gone. If I try to use it again, it says, I don't know what you're talking about. Now, to finish off, I will take and make a quick word to clear the screen. Or maybe I don't want to call it that. Maybe I want to call it CLS or clear screen. There you go. And I'm going to show you end this with one final demonstration to show you how powerful this actually is when you start building things together. Watch this. I'm going to go ahead and open up a new disk and create a brand new disk that's blank. It doesn't need to be formatted because these are virtual disks. It's blank right now as we talk, as we sit, as we sit and breathe. And I'm going to save this environment. Now what just happened there, it saved the entire fourth environment as a bootable system that I can come back into, which has our custom words. If I hit the reset button, it boots back into the environment. And we have our custom word here and our clear screen ready to go. They are now part of our vocabulary. And that just shows a small little dash of how powerful things are in fourth. And in subsequent videos, I will take and delve into this more in detail, especially into the context of the demos and stuff that I'm trying to make. Until next time, thank you very much for watching.